that's why it's believable for Leia because she would have learned how to do not necessarily like go through boot、mm. camp or anything, but you know she would have learned a lot for real world situations. And I feel like Luke maybe got to skip over training of like, oh, you're a Jedi, you're capable. Okay. Oh, dude, you blew up the Death Star. Pass.、Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah, get the accelerated、exactly. course. <laughs>、yeah. Right. Hello there. You found the lost holocron, an ancient artifact of lore and legends from a galaxy far, far away. Each transmission of the lost holocron. You will join an episodic discussion of media from the Star Wars universe. We will be your guides, Tim. Hello, everyone. Kyle. Now in 3D. Scott. <laughs> oh, I need more bourbon.、Uh, <laughs> and I'm Stuart. <laughs> we'll be covering the material up to and including Chapter 24 of Heirs of the Empire.、Uh, Kyle, what happened so far? Leia Organa Solo has gone into hiding with Chewbacca on his homeworld of Kashyyyk. Though their attempts seem like they may not be for not, on Merkur, Luke Skywalker, having just escaped from the capture of smuggler Talon Card and Mara Jade, crashes his and his pursuers' starfighters into the forest. Jade and Skywalker are tethered and dependent on each other for survival. Luke is now at the mercy of this woman whose life he supposedly ruined and wants him dead. Back at his compound, Card is hosting an imperial visitation while trying to hide from both imperials and new Republic representatives Han Solo and Lando Calrissian. His dealings with each side while dealing with his escaped prisoner Skywalker. Tim, what's going on? <laughs> Tell me about the chapter. For the love of God, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, in this chapter. Card apologizes to Han and Lando after their dinner interruption by the Imperials. Han presses Card about his dealings with them, but Card refuses to sell them information. However, he does convince them to stay for their safety. Han and Lando ostensibly return to the Falcon, but break off behind the tree line to play detective on the prisoner that Card had been keeping in one of his storehouses. While their investigation is interrupted by the reappearance of Card, they piece the clues together that Luke had been the prisoner. Card admits to the situation and tells them that, as far as they know, Luke and Jade are safe and making their return through the forest. On the Chimera, Thrawn suspects the truth of Card's deception and dispatches a contingent of stormtroopers to lie in wait for the survivors of the crash to emerge from the forest at the closest settlement. In the forest, as dusk fades away, Mara grapples with her cognitive dissonance between newfound loyalties and her fierce independent streak. She is frustrated at the encumbrance of Skywalker and his droid. After putting down a wild Bornsker, she takes some stim pills and renews her determination to be the one to kill Skywalker when this is all through. At his compound, Card laments his choices and how they have brought him to this predicament. He is reluctant to order the execution of Skywalker, but would rather that than taking his chances having crossed Grand Admiral Thrawn. Card wonders if, like his pet Bornskers, his domestication of Mara. Has taken enough to navigate a safe return. So, I love. <laughs> I love that in the last chapter, or maybe it was this one, but it, it was mentioned. Mara mentions like, I've been training. I go for walks during the day and the night. I went and find wild animals so I know how to take them down efficiently.、Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it, it, it shows up. She just shoots it in the head. I mean, <laughs> yeah. all this research and just blam.、Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many different methods she tested. <laughs>、oh. I mean, I do get it, but it's just funny that it's just like I know the perfect way to take this thing down. It's like the way you take down most things. Yeah. <laughs> I do like this hyper prepared Mara, though. Yeah, I do、yeah. too. And it's and I, I, I feel like she's she's much. I like how she seems to be a lot more practically trained and for like real world stuff, you know. Even though,、um, you know, whereas Luke without the Force is just completely useless. But she's done all、yeah. <laughs> training, you know, in in real life situations, and it's it's like you know she's just so much better than him at this point. Stuart, what lessons do you think Kreia would try to teach Mara Jade? <laughs> I, think, I think she's a model student for Kreia. <laughs> She'd be chiding,、um, chiding Luke that、uh, see, Luke, this is how it's supposed to be done. You're supposed to be doing this thing, <laughs> swatting him with a little bit of newspaper. Yeah. Right. 
Well, he didn't exactly have like a, a boot camp or anything like that, you know, to go through. He just had the swamp training with, with Yoda. Mm-hmm. But that was all force training. That was, but I mean, like maybe he did in the rebellion. Well, yeah. I mean, they have to train their troops at least a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that's why it's believable for Leia because she would have learned how to do not necessarily like go through mm. boot camp or anything, but you know she would have learned a lot to do with <laughs> that senator training. <laughs> well, no, not necessarily to her also, but you know, like as a child, you know, because it says she had a lot of self defense training and such. I feel like she would have had a lot of one on one training for real world situations and self defense and and such like that. Maybe not like you know how to survive a forest not per se, but. Um, we can tell by her reaction to Kashyyyk that she is not prepared. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Luke maybe like got to skip over training of like, oh, you're a Jedi, you're capable. Okay. Well, while we're out doing hunting, whatever. Oh, dude, you blew up the Death Star. Pass. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah, get the accelerated exactly. course. Yeah. Right. You go. You go. You, oh, just you're going to the gate program. You're. You're. Uh, you know, oh wait, fuzzy lizards. Oh crap. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I guess we didn't see that one coming. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, I, I feel like that is what we're, we are heading towards a path of. They both need to learn from each other. <laughs> Mara Jade's gonna need to learn the deeper ways of the Force, mm. while Luke needs to learn how to exist. <laughs> what it's like to get along without the Force. <laughs> Do you think it's gonna be a? Uh... Oh no, your chocolate's in my peanut butter kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. Though she is impressed with him on a few different occasions with his practical skills, like his observational skills, mm. which is surprising because we it's... haven't seen him be very observant before. <laughs> well, that's true, yeah. Emotionally observant. He has very high mm. emotional intelligence, but uh, yeah. yeah, beyond that, it's, yeah. Aside from that one time he didn't notice the lizards in the room. <laughs> right. But I mean, hey, he did pick up on um, cards born skirts not having tails. So, Oh, yeah. That, Props to him yeah, for that. Mm. Because he noticed the tail, you know, in the their fight or flight situation yeah. where it, like, whipped him across the face. Well, yeah, he would have noticed that, obviously, when it whipped him across the face with the tail. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, oh, that one had a tail, but, oh, cards didn't. That's- yes. That's well, I mean, uh, the fact that he recalled it, especially in a yeah, room where he's right, taking right. in a lot of information, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that Giant incredibly dream. beautiful decor. Yeah. No. <laughs> His ADHD brain's just like, ooh, shiny objects everywhere. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> but I mean, that is an ADHD thing to just like randomly remember mm-hmm. the most unexpected thing <laughs> mm-hmm. right. with extreme clarity. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He didn't notice anything else except for the fact that he didn't have tails. Yeah. <laughs> so there I was, fighting for my life, when I suddenly noticed they have docked tails. <laughs> <laughs> and knew this important would be this bit of information would be important later on. <laughs> so I stored that in the back of my mind. <laughs> when the tail that should have been there whipped me across the face. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean his Sending the message to the X-Wing like was a good idea as well. So yeah. She, yeah, she's yeah. impressed with that. But at the same time, she's annoyed because she knows he's he's stalling for him, for his and R2's sake. But he's also right. Yeah. 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 I mean, he needs to. So. Well, yeah. It's he, just so happy. He... self-preservation in mind. <laughs> yeah. I do like how Luke was like, R2's not a snitch. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's cool. He's been cool this whole time. I wonder if it's less that uh, R2 doesn't talk, but nobody understands binary well enough to know that R2 is a snitch. <laughs> right? Maybe he's, maybe he's trying to tell everybody, but nobody understands him. Yeah. <laughs> maybe R2 has a really weird binary dialect from not having his memory wiped. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. R2 likes to say y'all a lot. Y'all. <laughs> No. That does make me wonder, I mean, for the sake of his human companions, is uh, and like with R2 being on longer and longer, hmm. can he start to think faster than them and he has to slow his speeds down? I don't know. With him <laughs> constantly being on and like hasn't been rebooted in like 10 or 15 years or whatever, 
I would I would imagine him like starting to go insane. Yeah. He's like a Mr. Meeseeks who's been alive yeah, for too long. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I I, I kind of picture it like uh, I don't know if you <laughs> there's like a Justice League cartoon where uh, the Flash and uh, one of the other Flashes they're talking to each other, and as they're talking to each other, they both start to speed up more and more until they're just going at each other, and one of the other people has to go. Hey, we can't what you're saying. <laughs> That's great. But it, to the flash, it's like, <sighs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember there was like a, a moment in um, some Marvel comics where Quicksilver was like talking, basically saying the reason he's such an asshole is because everything is so slow for him oh, and slow. It, it, dealing with other people to him feels like standing <laughs> in a line forever. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. You know what? As someone with ADHD, I get it. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, you've been talking for probably a minute, but it feels like aeons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I know. I get like visibly irritated. Yeah. For me, it makes it worse being a video editor <laughs> because <laughs> my job is to cut things down to like the necessary information. <laughs> and so sometimes I find myself like unconsciously involuntarily yeah. doing it while I'm listening to people. And I'm like, oh, it didn't need that phrase. All right. Oh, here's the real point here. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> At least five times in the conversation when somebody's talking to me, I go back to the scene in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail where all the like all the soldiers are online. Get on with it, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, just being real here, I know, and I'm sure any fans listening can tell, I talk way too fast, and it's because I get really excited when I have an opportunity to speak, and I start to speak too fast, and I try to slow it down <laughs> because. Oh, okay. I know. I do the same thing. I will sometimes. speak at an unintelligible rate if I do not control myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoever edits that, that part all. has to speed it up for oh, for it. That, I, I, <laughs> I, I slowly I, speed it up <laughs> <laughs> as he's talking. <laughs> Speaking of speeding up, mm-hmm. I like the stim pills a lot. <laughs> Oh yeah. I like how she's like just a few of these in quick succession would like kill you. <laughs> right. Man, they love making names that just take years off your life in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> she does make a very good point though that if she uh if she's t- she's trading years at the end of her life for the rest of her life. Right? Yeah. So she could be killed immediately. <laughs> uh-huh. I also just love how she like is totally planning to just stay up for three days now. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's part of the pills, too. Maybe the pills are helping her with that. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't get it. She thinks she thinks that Luke is going to come, like, come attack her when he sees asleep or something. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. As if she's not going to do that to him. Well, no. The, the thing is, is when she crashed, she waited with her gun out because he's like, that chump's going to come check on me to make uh, sure yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Killing her with kindness. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> His boy scoutness. <laughs> Even though he can't survive in the forest. And then Card, Mando, and Han have a brief argument inside the storage shed. Everyone's pointing guns at each other. Mm-hmm. A lot of accusations being thrown around. <laughs> Speaking of which, like, so they find the little uh, bit, the like power supply piece for Luke's hand. Mm, is Luke's yeah. hand functioning right now? Is it a half capacity? Yeah, because it's dual supply. Right. Dual supply, but does it need both, or is it just a backup source? Yeah, I got the impression the dual supply was like a backup. Okay. Because I thought they mentioned something in... It may have been the next chapter. I don't know. But his hand seemed like, <laughs> it, was, uh, his hand seemed like it was okay. Okay. Now yeah. his hand can only do a flip off and a little shooty motion. <laughs> <laughs> flip the bird and then like the trigger finger, yeah. And he can't control when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> or just finger guns. <laughs> his hand suddenly gets hand Tourette's. <laughs> so it's like sign languaging, like like you know. 
Get, get me off of this guy. Get me off. <laughs> Idle hands, but in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> he flips off Mara and she's like, finally, he's speaking my language. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's the one thing that humanizes her to him. Yeah. <laughs> finally, some emotion. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm guessing like it's a dual power supply to provide like a steady because it said that it was some like slow drip type power. So mm. in order to keep that power constant, that it's got the two supplies there. So I'm guessing that like it's just not going to be as responsive or mm. a little maybe like laggy or something. Yeah, a little bit laggy maybe. <laughs> it's like he tries to grab something and it takes like three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He can move his whole arm, but then his fist doesn't uncurl in time mm -hmm. to, right. to wrap around the object. <laughs> he, like, knocks it over. He tries to punch something, and his fingers are still open. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> <Ow. laughs> oh, yeah, they, like, they, they dug into Card. And <laughs> oh, I yeah. really enjoyed seeing Card on the defensive for, like, mm -hmm. the past several chapters. Yeah. 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 And he just reached right, a working hit. point this time. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to do his best. Like he, mm. he clearly is just not taking any sides, and it's finally catching up with them. And now he's just like, "Yeah, this is all." Fun. <laughs> he's yeah. trying to cover his ass on three different fronts here. You know, it's like with Lando and Han and Thrawn and and Skywalker and Mara Jade. You know, it's like he's got like three different things he's worried about. Yeah. Plus whatever other business dealings he's had. Right, right, and those, yeah. he does on a normal basis that we don't know about. Yeah. Capitalist min maxer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, before we we said on the scale of Lando to Han, where does he lie? And we we were putting him pretty high on the Lando scale, but now I'm thinking like it's he is more practical than Lando. So I think mm. he's n not quite a set of point, but maybe two thirds Lando to Han, rather than like yeah. I can see more that. towards the Lando scale. Maybe this is a three axis scale instead of two. <laughs> and card is his own axis. His own axis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. He really just was like, oh, that's a problem for future me, and future me's here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the moment at the end of the chapter where um, it, it feels like, um, so like we've gotten this impression of him as someone who has like everything in control. And then that moment where it mentions he feels a shiver of melancholy and something that felt disturbingly like fear running through him. And then um, he says that he knew his life here was at an end. Mm -hmm. So like just that realization that like he's reached that point and he can't keep it up anymore. <laughs> yeah, That was a very humanizing moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you, do you think he's worried that he's going to die altogether or just the current life that he is accustomed to is just the current I think it's life. Just the current life he's used to. Yeah, I can see yeah. that basically have to be on the run now. Yeah. I got real drifter feels from him in yeah. that section. Ooh, right, yeah. Yep. Right. But, hmm. Seems like he got pretty comfortable on this spot though. He did. Yeah. Sure yeah, it does. does. He even says the throne, it's like, oh, we're not used to hosting such elite visitors on our private homeworld or whatever, he, however he calls it. Yeah. I mean, literally, mm. literally was a home for him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Although it sounds like he's been here for a very long time, because in yes. the previous chapters, it said, they've said, oh, people come and go, but this has always been a smuggler's world. Mm -hmm. And when the, the, the Republic would leave it alone because because of the the Jedi couldn't touch the world. Mm. And so it was kind of just ignored. And so that's where the smugglers would go to. But then when the Republic fell and there were no more Jedi, that smugglers went elsewhere because they didn't need the protection of the Isilamari. Mm -hmm. And so it does seem like he's been here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And poor card. <laughs> At the same time, though, should know what he was messing with. <laughs> he put himself into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, as well, he's a little bit of a, like a victim to his own code, as well, because mm. he's uh, like the host's code. I've got to, I've got to be hostly towards everybody who comes, and they're under my protection. And and um, you know, Mara just wanted to send them away. And oh, well, if I'd done that, then I wouldn't have to deal with all these things. And so, like, he feels feels like a little bit of a slave to his ideology. 
at some point and i'm wondering if he's like okay no i need to reassess the um like the foundations that he's setting his ideology at so do you think at this point maybe he's regretting allying himself with mara because she brought skywalker into all this <laughs> no i feel like he's um regretting his min maxer ideology of uh mm. well i've got to maximize every opportunity and say don't say no to anything that he said yes to a few too many opportunities and now he's as tim likes to put it they're spinning plates he's got mm. too many plates and realizes that he's only got two hands and um yeah it's just not not working out for him that uh uh, he's overreached or or something trying mm. to min max his capitalist lifestyle <laughs> his business dealings yeah his business yeah. dealings yeah oh. it, it sometimes it's tempting to spin one more plate. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um yeah speaking of that like it him trying to push his hostily hosting duties on han and lando reminded me of this movie called uh, speak no evil Mm. um where the it's a horror movie where a family mm. gets invited by another family into to their home that they met on vacation and so the family has a little daughter and they've got a little son so they 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 think oh it's 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 good they can play together and the uh, the parents get along so but like as the story go, goes on like it's not as a functional family as you might mm. think or want and so that's where the horror aspect starts creeping in. And um, I don't know if you haven't seen the movie, <laughs> uh, it's very uncomfortable, but it's also a very good, very good movie uh, mm. because like this kind of hosting duties is kind of forced like, oh, well, are we not good enough for you to stay? You know, mm. we'll, we're going to make mm. you lunch. We, oh, well, we planned all this stuff for you. You know, why don't you stay? And, and like the family knows that they're uncomfortable, but mm. they want, leave because these people are trying to push their hospitality on them and uh well you know go watch the movie <laughs> if you're old enough to see that kind of stuff yeah that, that's a good that pitch just, that just made me think of the uh the episode of family guy where they go to the family's house and they're all nudists <laughs> i haven't seen that one <laughs> it's kind of an older one actually yeah i haven't watched family guy in a long time actually no nah, me neither it has some staying power in your memory though this is back. This is back when it was worth watching, <laughs> <laughs> like The Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even like try to deny he had Luke <laughs> no, when they no, impressed him on it. He was right. just done. <laughs> He's like, "Fine, whatever." Yeah, it's Luke. <laughs> yeah. You want me to admit it? Fine, it's admitted. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm a phony, a big fat phony, a big yeah. fat phony. You're My life phony. is a lie. <laughs> Uh, and then another, another family <laughs> it just makes me appreciate the end of the chapter more where he's just he seems like the guy sitting on his rocking chair looking out into the forest and he can hear the chittering and the cackling of the the Vonskas and he's like where is my life coming to <laughs> <laughs> real dark night of the soul there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah yeah no Really, really enjoyed this chapter for Card a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I did like Han and Leo and Lando playing detective as well, and then yeah, having yeah. them all, all, all sit there. And like I mentioned in the last last chapter, that Han's idiosyncrasies are really coming through in this book. Uh, him going, jump in anytime you want. You want to fill in the blanks here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was really good. Well, yeah, and like you said, Card's really on the defensive, and especially when they accused him of being like a a kidnapper or. or human trafficker or whatever and you know i thought that was kind of cool and he's like like we don't do that yeah that really seemed to throw him off kilter yeah he he, he took offense to that so considering this is a trilogy mm -hmm. do you you think card is gonna make it through this trilogy because I, I of all the characters here oh not a lot of expendable ones Right, and I was thinking about that too. Actually, after reading this chapter, I was like, "Is he going to survive this trilogy?" I mm. honestly don't know. I feel like Pelion. Pelion might make it a book too. Hmm. I think, <laughs> see. I don't know. I think. I feel like Pelion is kind of like under the protection of Thrawn, though. You know, like plot wise. 
I think as the point of view character, Pelion is quite... Um, oh, that's true, yeah. If he's the point of view character, then yeah. That's a metatextual reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that as the point of view character, Pelion really feels like the the inheritor of Thrawn's knowledge. And I feel like that sets him up for survival, right? That he is going to receive all the fruits of Thrawn's bounty. Thrawn is putting, laying out the seeds and he's going to reap what Thrawn sows. Or they're going to get Pelion and that'll make Thrawn crack because mm. now he's investing in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, my protege. <laughs> oh, I think the exact opposite. I think I think Thong keeps putting on coast so he can trip him when he needs to get him, make a quick escape. <laughs> Shoot him in the leg when they have to start running. Right. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's how Pelion will go out. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think I think Thong will have no problem sacrificing Pelion if it's going to give him even like a half a second more of a head start. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's for anyone. I don't think there's anyone that. that as of right now, I don't think there's anyone that Thrawn cares about. Mm. No, no, I feel like yeah. everybody is expendable. Everyone is equally expendable. Yeah, he is surrounded by resources, not people. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I was just thinking. I don't know. I don't know the rating of this book. I, I don't know if characters are going to die. <laughs> mm. But I feel like if characters can die in these books, then uh, cards in a tight spot right now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels like his little bit of like redemption arc, the the redemption arc that leads into death. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Do you guys think there are parallels between Thrawn and Card? I don't see anything yet, but it doesn't mean I mean both are strategizers. Mm. And they always seem to have an answer for everything. Yeah. Hmm. And they cover their bases. Although card seems more fallible right is fake it till you make it and he hasn't made it yet yeah well i mean has thrawn made it <laughs> yeah no he's definitely made it oh he has i mean he made it but like not currently he made it at one point he's yeah. on a down slope and he's trying to get back up <laughs> yeah right you know again he going back to earlier chapters where he talked about how well, no, he didn't talk about it, but uh, I think Pelion was talking about how the people on the ship, while wearing the uniforms, are sloppy, like, doing their best. They're not, like, they don't have the prestige that their former generations did. They're mm. just, like, you know, it's not as good as it was. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure... I'm sure Thrawn wants to get back to a position of power. I don't know if he truly cares about the Empire, except for in the regards that it made him powerful. Mm -hmm. He's just looking for a project. Right. And this is the this is the biggest project he can find. Because I mean what I I, I I keep coming back to I don't know what he's doing here. Mm -hmm. I he, like he I don't think he cares about the Empire. He could just go back to his home world, I assume. Maybe, mm. if it's there still. Mm. But, like, I mean, he's only here because what, it, uh, Palpatine really liked him or something like that. Because, uh, in, in general, the Empire does not have non human species in mm. high regards, period. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, given that this is his first introduction and we are not relying on anything besides a kind of the movies and a general knowledge of Star Wars outside of that, that or like general inferences about the universe that he is a mysterious commander, probably de motivated by prestige hmm. and, you know, just like Dr. Strange probably has a huge ego about proving mm -hmm. that he has the best execution of strategy or he has been open to suggestions though provided they're good yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but i guess that's that's all part of it though he wants to and you know as as Kreia said if you're believe in an ideal you must be willing to 
betray it. Mm. And he is willing to sacrifice even his own ideas on the way to becoming the best strategist he can be. I think that's where it's interesting to compare him to Card because Card has ideals that he won't sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like um, his own mm -hmm. code that we mentioned was his undoing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I feel like you can learn more about both characters by placing their traits side by side to each other. Yeah. I, I feel like Thrawn is definitely trying to achieve a peak way higher than Card is, though. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, they mentioned, um, you know, Card's not doing everything possible and like taking huge risks i mean uh they, they they mentioned how he at one point was considering selling void turn just as like oh, a yeah. defensive thing and then yeah. they're like oh he just he never got around to it yeah <laughs> you know he, he clearly has a like for the finer things mm. like you know he, he likes his decorations he clearly is sophisticated to a degree um and Thrawn also enjoys looking at art, but for a much different reason. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, at the very beginning of the book, they did try to characterize, set up the expectation that smugglers are conservative business people. Mm. And I feel like he's lived up to that. He, as you know, I've put in the summaries in previous chapters that he values independence above everything else. Despite that being his overall goal, he also is concerned with other things that I think are, uh, what are they called? It's not a terminal goal. It's a, so there's two types of goals. There's a terminal goal and instrumental goals. Instrumental mm -hmm. goals get you towards something else, but terminal goals are, you know, the very end. Mm -hmm. So... You know, he, the instrumental goals that he has set are these things that are keeping him back from achieving that terminal goal of just a state of independence. Because he wants to be a host, but now he's enslaved to these ideals. And so he is not achieving his uh, terminal goal of, of independence because he's not independent from these other ideals that he's set up for himself. Right, yeah. Honestly, like, what a fascinating character. <laughs> like, the more we've seen of him, the more I've liked him. <laughs> So, mm. big props to Timothy's on for a card. Yeah, no. I, I do yeah. enjoy him. I, I really do enjoy Thrawn. I, I am. It is a little tiring when he does just seem to know everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he, he does know exactly where the nearest city is from where he is on this planet. <laughs> he's like, oh, that's where they're going to come out. We'll wait for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, another detail I liked in that scene. With, with Thrawn discussing his plans is that he was like, all right, I can, we can stay here for this long, mm. but Slew's van is going to call us eventually and we can't compromise mm. that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He had the, the big art gallery. Uh, yeah. The Slew EC art. <laughs> yeah. A bi-annual or a two-year dip in um, the, 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 their, their slow point or they're on the back foot at, at this point that he's recognizing from some sort of two-year cycle. Yeah. And it mentioned that these are also sculptures, but they're sculptures that are moving. And it very specifically said that the, they were changing form in some way. And that makes me feel like we there was a, a sculpture a few chapters back mm -hmm. that it gave the impression oh. of the movement. And oh. we thought like, oh, is this some kind of optical illusion or something? But now I'm thinking, like, what if they're made of like nano droids or mm. these are living sculptures in some way that they are programmed to to move like this in the same way that you might consider like a fire is a sculpture oh neat mm. or a waterfall all right yeah yeah that's a good example <laughs> that's so funny kyle what you chuckling about i was thinking about Stuart talking about types of goals and it made me think of that scene from malcolm in the middle where he <laughs> tries to like change a light bulb or something like that and then but like <laughs> you're gonna have to clue me in <laughs> Tim already knows there's what's a, going on <laughs> so there's a scene in the mouth in the middle where the father tries to change a light bulb mm -hmm. but when he goes to get the light bulb he 
again. He notices the shelf that the light bulb is on is broken. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to get a screwdriver from a drawer to fix the thing. But then it like, then, but then he notices the hinge on the drawer is not working. Uh (laughs) And so he goes to get in his car. And when he starts the car, it makes like a weird noise. (laughs) And like, uh, and like, so it cuts to him like under, like he has the engine out of the car and he's underneath it trying to work on it. And, and his wife is like, hey, can you try to, can you change the light bulb in the dining room? It's out. And he's like, what does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is the definition of ADHD. Wait, what, what did I do that remind you of that? <laughs> well, because you were talking about types of goals. And so the, like, the, the, the terminal goal was to change the light bulb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the uh-huh. instrumental goal. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay. That is a classic scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any uh, instrumental discussions before Al Terminus? I, I like this chapter. I, I, I am I, I am ready for Mara and Luke's first uh, date first through the woods. <laughs> <His first date. laughs> uh-huh. I, I liked... Uh, uh, Lando and Han uh, playing detective. I thought that was kind of cool. Lando oh, was like, yeah, "Oh, yeah. they shot, they shot twice." You know, like he's yeah, that was CSI, fun. which I thought was kind of cool. That was a really fun. And part, then yeah. yeah, and then Han has his blaster on Card, and then Card starts talking. And he lowers his blaster, and Card keeps talking. He raises his blaster, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, that was oh, that was a really good interaction. I did like that." I yeah. did feel like those two characters as well of like, oh, we're going to be over here. And then they don't I do mean, that and just walk yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I like how, I like how card came up on, on Han. And he's like, oh, it looks like you lost Lando. And then Lando like has a blaster on his back and he's like, oh, well, luckily we don't stay lost very long. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> That's what I want more, more adventures like that. Han and Lando, the detective crew. Yeah, <laughs> they're a good pair. Yeah. They are, and particularly the several men. Uh, when when Luke was uh, captured there, he mentioned that Lando had taught him how to do that thing, and mm. so it was interesting that Lando was the one to also pick it up. And I thought there was going to be a little moment of like, "Oh, this looks familiar," but then I guess like if he's it probably systematized in some kind of way, like, "Oh, this person knows what they're doing," or or something like that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you walk in later, and there's that little little battery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like how they're like slowly piecing everything together and you know like they they say it without saying it basically it's like oh it's luke's the scuff marks on the floor yeah <laughs> droid droid, restraining droid, collar droid, droid, for yeah. an astromech <laughs> he's like yeah. have your, it's like i thought your people would clean their stuff or whatever you know yeah <laughs> yeah 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 tell them to pick up their toys or whatever he says i like to see han as like the adult in the room yeah it is know. nice yeah <laughs> Because he can actually kind of be like a, a tough guy at times when he needs to be. I kind of I like that. Absolutely, yeah. I want a little bit more from from Lando. Just that. Me too. Lando charm, <laughs> yeah. but so far I've been very very satisfied with their interactions. Yeah. Particularly <laughs> when, when when Han's got the the presentation and he's looking through his slides, <laughs> and then they, then they turn to Lando and they're like, "And so, are you here as like a, a hawker or a wingman, or what's going on here?" And he's like, "No, I'm just here along for the ride. I'm just here to watch. <laughs> yeah, just a casual observer." One uh, bit of detail that I liked is that Card mentions that like a lot of his people would know Luke because of like taking down java so i like the idea that mm. luke is also kind of like a smuggler hero for that even though no. leia technically took down java yeah yeah well, do you think leia likes that people think luke killed her more than because it gives her a lower profile that probably helps her politically <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right like, I, don't th- I don't think she wants to know people to know that she's a killer. That was that was a savage kill too. <laughs> yeah, she murdered the biggest crime boss in the whole freaking galaxy at the time. And yeah, yeah, it was yeah. A freaking chain. <laughs> That's the other thing. It puts pressure on her in general, right? If everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Luke killed all these people," then you know Luke can defend himself more. Currently, currently, yeah. yeah. Soon that will change. Because we all know that Leia's going to end up more competent than Luke. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I didn't read it in the chapters ahead. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm just extrapolating this one. <laughs> <laughs>
I guess I did want to say something more on um on how Luke is a smuggling hero, but uh I guess I don't actually have anything to say about it apart from like I like that. Yeah. It was an interesting detail that oh, you know, nobody's gonna want to do this job and it's like, well, it's his skin or us and Yeah. It makes yeah. the universe just a little bit richer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're approaching the end game. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> kind of in the home Very nice. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yep. All right. This has been the Lost Holocron. You can find transcripts, links to discussion, and more at our website, lostholocron.com. While you're there, you can learn how to support the creation of future episodes. Read on, and we'll be waiting for you in the next transmission. We would be honored if you would join us. <laughs>